Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, oh, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I see a yellow-eyed serpent what? and a low APR. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do. Every weekday over the airwaves, the VSPN Radio 250-plus markets across the United States of America, and of course... ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style, Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Half hour or so into the show, Damian Woody, former Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots, former player with the New York Jets, now an NFL analyst with ESPN. He will be on the line with us. Plus, we have our resident handicapper based out of Vegas, the one and only R.J. Bell. He'll bring, he'll come on with us in hour number two to break down these NFL playoff matchups, Las Vegas style. Number to call up as always again is 888 say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Got a jam packed show coming your way today. Got a few things to get into with LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers just staking up the joint. I mean, Lord have mercy. They let, they did they get romped by Toronto last night. Just the, the game before they got romped. By the Minnesota Timberwolves. J.R. Smith going scoreless in both games. Oh, we'll talk about all that. We'll talk about all that. Don't worry. Don't you worry. I won't forget. I promise you that, Lakers. Looking a little decent these days. On a little game, on a little, little winning streak right there. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. We'll get into all of these playoff matchups. New England and Tennessee. Jacksonville and Pittsburgh. New Orleans at Minnesota. Of course, Saturday's game, Atlanta and Matty Ice and the reigning defending NFC champions going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. Number one seed who would be destined to go to the Super Bowl if Carson Wentz hadn't gone down, in my opinion, but now might not even win a damn playoff game. Black Cat seems to be running around that franchise somewhere. All of that and more to talk about as the show progresses right here. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. First order of business to get into. However, is um, Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell, ladies and gentlemen, is arguably the best running back in all of football. Le'Veon Bell is an individual that um, has shown time and time and time again that he can produce, that he can get it done. This year had over 1,200 yards uh, rushing, had over 650 yards receiving. That puts him at nearly 2,000 yards from scrimmage. When you look at the amount of times he rushes the football, which is 321. Combined with the amount of times he's caught the football, which is about 85. This is a man that gets over 400 touches or has had over 400 touches. He's franchise tagged for this season at about $12.1 million. And he went on the record yesterday to sit up there and say, guess what? Don't think about trying to franchise him again if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. He doesn't want a one-year deal for any amount of money. He wants a long-term deal. And he goes on to sit up there and say, I hope it doesn't come to that, but I would definitely consider it. When he was asked by ESPN whether or not he was prepared to sit out the season or even retire if the franchise tag was placed on them for a second consecutive year. He sat up there and when asked what the Steelers should do this offseason, he said it simply, value me. Just get the numbers straight, exactly where we want them. I'm not going to settle for anything less. I know what I do and I know what I bring to the table. I'm not going out there, getting the ball 400 times, and I'm not getting what I feel I'm valued at. He then decided to go on waxing poetically about how it's not about the money, it's about the principle. It's not about the money. It's about the players of the future. The Ezekiel Elliott's of the world and others that he has to look out for. Oh, oh, stop it. That's not the issue here. Of course it's about the money. Of course it's about the money. And damn it, it should be. I want to be the first to say, I believe Le'Veon Bell should get his money. I believe he deserves every penny. 
I think it's an absolute travesty that he hasn't been taken care of yet. He's clearly the most valuable player on the Steelers. There is no excuse on God's green earth why they couldn't take care of him. Now, in fairness to the Steelers, they'll make the argument that they did have a long-term deal for him on the table last offseason. And that long-term deal, which wasn't good enough for Le'Veon Bell, which made him sit out the preseason and training camp and all of that stuff because he refused to show until the season began. That same stuff that was happening when it concerned him. It was a long-term deal on the table where the Steelers revealed that it was $30 million in guaranteed dollars on the table for him first two seasons, which would have put him at $15 million. Le'Veon Bell clearly feels he's worth more. I got a simple question for everybody there. It's a couple of questions. Number one, how much is a running back worth in today's NFL? How much is a running back worth? And number two, I sincerely hope you don't blame him for feeling the way that he feels because Le'Veon Bell is absolutely right. You play in that running back spot, particularly in a position where everybody thinks you're done by the age of 30 and you got to defy the odds, the Frank Gores, the Adrian Petersons of the world before somebody is willing to modify their positions. I definitely think Le'Veon Bell has a point, no doubt. But I will say this. I believe it was quite stupid of him to speak up this particular week. Has anybody seen who Le'Veon Bell is about to go up against? Has anybody recognized how tenacious this Jacksonville defense really is? They're number two in the entire NFL, ladies and gentlemen, against the pass and against the rush. And in points and yards allowed. They're number two. Only team better, Minnesota Vikings. Why in God's name, if you're Le'Veon Bell, would you make noise leading into that game? I know you're confident. But my goodness, you're going up against one of the elite defenses in all of the NFL with a bunch of young Rough Riders on that squad. Calais Campbell is the senior citizen of the crew. This defensive line got about 55 sacks. They're top two against the rush. Their secondary with Ramsey and the crew is no joke. They even got a former Dallas Cowboy there named Barry Church, and he's not even contaminating them because of his pedigree with the Cowboys. He hasn't even had a contaminating effect. Why in God's name would you pick this week if you're Le'Veon Bell to open your mouth? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. That's the number to call up. That's what I'm wondering about. That's what has me a bit flummoxed. A bit perplexed because obviously I'm a Steelers fan. I'm rooting for them. But do I fear the Jacksonville Jaguars a little bit? Defensively, hell yes, I do. I saw what they did to the Steelers October 8th. I saw how Ben Roethlisberger threw five interceptions. I saw how he was speaking after the game, looking like a lost puppy, talking about, maybe I don't have it anymore. I saw all of that. And maybe it was just a bad day at the office, and I understand it. But Jacksonville has caused a lot of people a bad day at the office. Just ask Tyrod Taylor and what Buffalo happened last week. Three points. Three. This defense is no joke. They are not to be taken lightly. They are to be recognized and respected. And if they get the better of Le'Veon Bell, who's to say the Steelers are not going to use it as leverage to lowball them? They'll have the fan base behind them. Let Le'Veon Bell go out there and stink up the joint. Or get hurt quick again and can't go in in another playoff game like he couldn't go in the AFC Championship game against the New England Patriots, which a lot of people think cost the Steelers the Super Bowl. Let it happen again. What people are going to think? I think he deserves his money. I think he's sensational. I don't think, I think he should be unapologetic about wanting his money. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be smart. This was not the week to open his mouth. And I hope that he doesn't pay the price. 888 729 That's 888-SAY-ESPN. We'll talk about that, plus we'll get into these matchups. I still think the Steelers are going to win. I don't even need to talk about the Patriots and Tennessee because I damn sure don't expect Marcus Mariota to beat Tom Brady. New Orleans going up to Minnesota is something to talk about. Atlanta going to Philly is something to talk about. All that and more up next. Don't touch that dial. Stick around. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. 
You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. By the way, please get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. I'll get back to my discussion about the NBA, I'm sorry, the NFL uh, playoffs round two, divisional playoff rounds. Uh, I'll get to the callers in just a second at 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. But I'm going to deviate away from that for a second uh, to address yet another thing. See, this is the beauty of having a radio show. This is exactly why I love having a radio show. Because once again, another lie told, or shall I say embellishment or misrepresentation, whatever word you want to use. Yesterday it was about the why it was by the Washington Post in regards to my words words. Today it's from the New York Daily News, a paper that I used to work for, by the way. A paper that I've always been a fan of and that I read every chance I get. Nevertheless, inaccurate headline Stephen A. Smith says ESPN should stick to sports, ignore Trump. That's what they're trying to say. That I said peeling from my interview with sporting news. Uh, where they did a Q&A with myself and Max Kellerman. I never said that. They parsed my words. They parsed my quotes, whatever the case may be. I said there's something different. And by the way, I never commented about my colleague and friend, Jamel Hill. They introduced the question talking about her and Trump. Then they parlayed that into asking about me and why don't I find myself? In those kind of situations, whatever they may be. We talked about trolls on Twitter. We talked about people trying to bait you. And we also mentioned the fact that, hey, I did say what I said as it pertains to the president himself. Do I believe the president has been a bit juvenile in his behavior? Yes, he has. Having said that, let's it's one thing to attack what he does. It's an entirely different matter to attack him. When you attack him, then we are stepping out of our lane. We are a sports network. We have an obligation to wake up every day with the mindset that we not only speak for ourselves, but we speak on behalf of the brand. It's not a brand that we own. It's a brand that employs us. It has entrusted us to represent it just as much as we care about representing ourselves. So with that in mind, we have to be cognizant of all of those things, meaning be cognizant, cognizant to the point where you pay attention. Cognizant to the point where somebody can't accuse you of ignoring your journalistic responsibilities because of personal feelings. And by virtue of that, you focus on what somebody does as opposed to who they are. Who the hell am I to say stick to sports and never talk about anything else? Sports is a microcosm of society. But because it's a microcosm of society, when you venture beyond the world of sports to talk about things that resonate in communities throughout the United States of America, you're going to find yourself venturing away from sports. But it's one thing to talk about those things. And it's another thing to talk about a person. That is what I said. And by the way, I've said it for years. And why the hell would I tell somebody to stick to sports and never talk about politics when I've been on all the damn networks? I've been on Fox News. I've been on CNN. I've been on MSNBC. I've been on ABC. I've been on NBC. I've been on CBS. I've been all over the place. I've been on Joe Madison's show that I listen to every morning, Sirius XM, Urban View, Channel 126. Don't miss it. He's the man. Karen Hunter, a former Pulitzer Prize winner who I work with at the New York Daily News, has her own show on the same channel from 3 to 6 every day. She and I have been friends for 25 years plus. I'm friends. I know Sean Hannity. The great one, Mark Levin, I listen to them too. You think I never talked about politics before? Saying that I said... Stick to sports, don't talk about politics. When I've done it on numerous occasions throughout my career. Lies, ladies and gentlemen. That is not what I said. But when people want to get at you, they misrepresent your words. I normally don't choose to come to my own defense a lot of times. Because people lie about me all the time. But in this particular instance, I wanted to because I think that you're seeing a concerted effort by newspapers and other publications or whatever the case may be trying to paint a picture of me against one of my colleagues. I would never do that, especially publicly. If I had something to say to Jamel Hill, I'd say it to her face. You damn sure wouldn't know about it. But it's a lie. I've never once addressed Jamel Hill 
and whatever she's had to say about Trump. And I'll never will to you all. It never has happened. And I won't do it now. Period. More lies, ladies and gentlemen. They keep getting me started. I'm going to sound like Donald Trump. Start calling everybody fake news. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Enough of that. Let's get back to some sports. Let's go. To Danny in LA, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A. How are you? Happy New Year. Congratulations on the new show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Okay, real quickly, this Le'Veon Bell stuff, I mean, how stupid can you be to come out with it this week to reiterate what you were saying? How come this agent's not controlling this guy, telling him to keep his mouth shut? You and I both know running backs come and go, and that window is closing for him. This oh, is the whoa, beginning whoa, of the end. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was with you until you said that last comment, the window's closing for him. What evidence do you have that the window's closing? Well, just based off of the history, you see that basically most of the running backs have a four- to six-year gap as far as being productive. When you hit that closer to 29, 28, and 30, then obviously the production But he's 25. What I'm saying? But but, but he's 25, and what he's trying to do is avoid the one-year franchise tag and get a four- to five-year deal for an exorbitant amount of dollars. As far as I'm concerned, you just made his case for him. Yeah, but Stephen A., I may have made that case for him if he's only 25, but how selfish can you be? Who wants that in the locker room? And he's been causing problems since he was smoking blunts with blunts a few years ago. Time out, time out, time out, time out. See, that bothers me right there. I almost want to hang up on you, but I'm not going to do that. You didn't have to go there. I mean, it happened. So factually speaking, you're not wrong, but you did not have to go there. This brother has been back. He has been flat out balling. There are stipulations in a contract that addresses behavioral issues in the event that you transgress. It could cost you dollars. There was no reason for you to bring something like that up. That's a low ball tactic on your part. The bottom line is, do you think he deserves the money? We both agreed he should shut the hell up and he never should have said anything. But you don't have to go to that point to knock the man down for saying what you and I both know is factually correct, which is that he deserves his money based on his level of production. You know that. Tell me this and why haven't they given him the money yet? Why hasn't he had they that? Gave him, they gave him. They gave him. I'm, I'm, uh, excuse me. You're going to ask the question and then answer it, too. What you want me to do? You want me to give you an answer? The man had a long-term deal on the table. It was a long-term deal that guaranteed him $30 million within the first two years of his deal, which came up to obviously about $15 million a year. He believes, based on his level of production, in concert with his workload, that he is worth more than that to the Steelers, and you can't find a football aficionado anywhere that would disagree with him. Who's the highest paid running back right now in the league? I don't know that answer. I don't know that answer either, but I will in a few minutes. I'll definitely get that for you. Appreciate the call. 888-729-3776. 888-SAY-ESPN. More of your calls in a few minutes, but not before I get to my man Damian Woody, former Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots, now an NFL analyst extraordinaire for ESPN. He's up next with yours truly right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio. As always, my honor and privilege to have my next guest on the line, NFL analyst extraordinaire, Super Bowl champion, formerly with the New England Patriots, obviously working for ESPN. He's always great on radio, on television. Sometimes he does not wear a tie, and I will not tolerate that. I am the big boy, not him, but here he's the big boy right now. The one and only Damian Woody is on the line with us right now. What's up, big boy? How you doing, man? What's going on, man? You look, you you controlling things right now because you know the deal. Oh, you know whatever. The deal. You watch your mouth. You watch your tone, man. Here's the listen, man. This is a, listen. I'm excited about all of these games that are coming up. But before I get into the games themselves, what were your thoughts about Le'Veon Bell picking yesterday to speak out about his contract situation, knowing the Jacksonville Jaguars, the number two defense in the entire NFL, is what he's got to go up against this weekend? Well, obviously it was bad timing. You never bring business into, you know, a situation where, you know, you're still in the season. There's a time for business. There's a time to talk contracts. But right now, he picked the worst worst time to kind of interject that whole situation 
with the playoff game, the divisional playoff game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got to well, have his hands full enough with the, with the Jaguars, but now he's being, being attacked on, on two fronts with the contract situation. Do you think, th- th- you know, picking this time to talk, like for me, if he then goes out there and he wets the bed and doesn't perform well, I don't think it would be fair. I don't think it should happen, but I think it would be us- utilized in the, as a negotiating ploy against them in the off season. That's what I'm thinking. What about you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You go out there and wet the bed against the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, in, in the in the divisional round. Obviously, that's going to be a lightning rod from not only you know management but fans alike. So again, like you said, he just picked a terrible time to be talking about contracts when you know you're trying to advance in the playoffs here. We're talking to Damian Woody with Stephen A. right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's get into th- before I get into something else uh, in terms of the games on the field. Your thoughts about all the noise about the New England Patriots over the past week, the rift between Kraft and Brady and, and Bill Belichick. What were your thoughts about all of that as a person that won a championship with the Patriots? Well, listen, I, for, listen I'll say this. Uh, you know, our colleague Seth Wickersham does, Seth Wickersham, does yeah. absolute great, does great work. There's no question about it. We know that the article is well-written, well-sourced, all those type of things. But here what I, here's what I would say, Stephen A. There's no organization – in the National Football League that knows that knows how to ignore the noise better than the New England Patriots. We've seen it before with Spygate, with the Flategate. All these different things come about, and you know what the Patriots keep doing? They just win. They win because you know why? They have one singular voice in Bill Belichick that knows how to get his guys focused on what's really important, and that's going out there and winning football games. And I don't anticipate anything anything different happening this time around either. Damian, when you won a championship with the New England Patriots, Tom Brady was your quarterback, Bill Belichick was your coach, Robert Kraft was your owner. Do you believe that Bill Belichick will be the coach of the New England Patriots next year like he said he would? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I, I wholeheartedly feel that that whole trio will be back next year. Listen, I've always said, well, there's smoke, there's fire. There's no question about that. You're talking about people, talking about three men who are alphas. That in that organization, and when you get alphas together, there's going to be some some things that are unsettling. There's going to be some things that's done or said. But I think when the smoke clears and when everything settles, you'll see that that you'll see Bill Belichick, Tom Brady back in the mix in in 2000, moving forward to next season. Let's go on the field, Damian Woody, and talk about some of these games here. First game to my mind, I'll get it right out the way. I don't see Tennessee having any kind of chance whatsoever against the New England Patriots. But if they're going to win this game, which we all believe they won't, what would Tennessee have to do in order to win this game in, in, at Foxborough? Number one thing, number one thing you got to do. Coach Belichick used to preach this all the time. More teams find ways to lose games than win them. So if you're Tennessee, you cannot turn the ball over. Because the Patriots will pass all over, and that will be the end of the game. That's number one. Can't turn the ball over. Number two, you got to control the time of possession. Try to keep Tom Brady on the sideline. Run the football with Derrick Henry. They don't have, you know, DeMarco Murray, you know, unfortunately, but they do got a sledgehammer in, 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 the, in the big boy Derrick Henry. Run the football. Control the clock. That is the only way that they're going to have a chance to beat New England and Foxborough. And one last point: score touchdowns. You can't get into the red zone. And kick field goals. You got to get when you get down there. You got to get seven, not three. Damian Woody, right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's stay within the NFC with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville's defense is elite, and they've got youth at practically every position outside of Calais Campbell out there. Your thoughts on what this game? What's the key to this game, and who do you have winning? Okay, so here, here's the deal. Last time they played, uh, Leonard Fournette ran wild. Leonard mm-hmm. Fournette ran wild. 181 yards. 181, 181 yards, 828 carries. That's right. He ran wild. So, to the Pittsburgh Steelers, defensively going into this game, make Jacksonville one-dimensional. Blake Bortles' confidence is shot. Anyone who's watched Jacksonville the past couple of weeks, the guy, he just lost all his confidence. He had like a three, three-week three window in the month of December where he looked absolutely – he looked really, really well. Past couple of weeks, not so much. So I'm stacking a box against Leonard Fournette, Chris Alvarez, them boys, and I'm going to put the ball. I'm going to make Blake Bortles beat me, and I don't think he will against Big Ben in that offense. Big Ben talked about how 
this is maybe one of the best defenses he's ever gone against. He's been raving about the Jacksonville uh, Jag- Jaguars. I remember speaking to Teddy Bruschi yesterday when he was talking about the New England Patriots and what their philosophy is and how Bill Belichick would say spray the perfume, spray the, spray the perfume on an opponent to, you know, just shower them with praise and all of that other stuff. Don't do anything to motivate them. You could make the argument that that's what Big Ben Roethlisberger is doing here, or you could recognize the fact that he threw five interceptions against them last October 8th and and ultimately talked about how he might not have it anymore after going up against them. And that you might use that as a rationale to say, maybe he has some fear when it comes to this team. Which one do you think it is? Well, here's the, here's the difference. Okay. When you look at um, coach Belichick in New England and how they, you know, quote unquote, spray the perfume. They do that. They do that with every opponent, whether it be, it could be the green Bay Packers or it could be the Cleveland Browns. Mm. Coach Belichick believes in, you know, finding the best of any team, regardless of the record. So he just so he doesn't give them bulletin board materials. Whereas when we're talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars and in particular their defense, mm-hmm. this is legit. This is, in my opinion, the best defense in the National Football League. They are they are elite on every level of that defense. They have speed. They have pass rushers galore that can get after the quarterback. And if the Pittsburgh Steelers don't stay ahead of the chains, and what I mean by that. They need to keep things in third and three, third and four. You get to third and eight, nine, ten plus, that's where the Jaguars excel because they got pass rushes. They've got 55 sacks this year. 55 sacks. Lord have mercy. Big Ben Roethlisberger, good luck on the kind of day you're hoping to have. I can tell you that. Let's transition to the NFC real quick. New Orleans is going to Minnesota. What do you make of this one? Well, man, this is going to be, a, this to me, this is the best game of the, this is the best game in my opinion. Uh, you're talking about Case Keenum. What a story you, you got in Case Keenum, who to me is like a dark, dark horse type MVP. The way that Pat Sherman, the Minnesota Vikings offensive coordinator, has handled handled Case Keenum in that offense. So you got an elite Minnesota defense going up against that Drew Brees led New Orleans offensive attack. Something's got to give here, Stephen A. One of the things got to give, and usually in the playoffs, a great defense will beat a great offense. So I think that's the matchup to watch in this game. Mm, last game of the weekend. I mean, listen, you got Atlanta going up against Philadelphia, even though that game is before New Orleans, Minnesota, because you've got Atlanta going up against Philadelphia Saturday. Uh, they have Nick Foles, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's what should give Atlanta the edge. Everybody's talking about, uh, Nick Foles having to perform against Atlanta's defense. What about Matt Ryan having to perform against the Eagles defense? I think Matt Ryan should have the edge here, but what are your thoughts? Well, listen, uh, at the Philadelphia Eagles defense, they're no slouch. They got some, they got some dogs up front that can get after the quarterback. Fletcher Cox and those boys, Brandon Graham, those boys can get after the passer. So Matt Ryan took a step back with this year, you know, compared to last year. Their, their points per game is, is over 10 points less this year as opposed to last year. But I think if you're the Atlanta Falcons going against the Philadelphia Eagles defense, you got to rely on your two-headed monster in the backfield with with uh, Coleman and uh, Devontae Freeman. Those two got ride those guys because that's going to be the key in this game. Because if you got Matt Ryan dropping back a whole bunch of times, that front of the Philadelphia Eagles will be able to get out to Matt Ryan. So, bottom line is this: you've got who winning in the NFC, Philly or Atlanta? So I got Atlanta going on the road and getting the win in, in Philadelphia. You got New Orleans or Minnesota? Man, man you, what, what's the hesitation? Been, what's whoa, the hesitation, minute, big boy? Don't, don't try to get, wait a minute. Don't try to get on me too quick, no, man. I am going to get on Don't you. try to get on me too quick. <laughs> I'm going to go with the New Orleans Saints with the road with the road win in Minnesota. Okay. All right. I like so that. I got, I, like both road, I got both road teams getting the win this week. Uh, New England's an easy choice over Tennessee. We know where you're going to go with that. Pittsburgh, Jacksonville, who you got? I'm going Pittsburgh. I'm going okay. Pittsburgh. I do, Blake Bortles is in the tank. I don't see the Jacksonville Jaguars rushing for that many yards against Pittsburgh again. They're going to put the ball in Blake Bortles' hands, and I don't think he gets it done against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, there's hope for you after all. You actually agree with me. That shows me that you are learning. You are listening, <laughs> and you are learning. And you are, I'm, I'm very, very proud you. of you. I'm, I'm schooling you, Steve. Oh, I'm you, you, schooling you. you, 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 you like, I do every, like I do every time on first take, I'm schooling you. Oh, whatever. 
Good to have a good weekend, Damian Woody. Have a good one. <laughs> All, right. All right, man. Enjoy the game, All right, big baby. boy. No doubt. You All too. Right now. Damian Woody, NFL analyst extraordinaire for ESPN. Right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. 888-729-3776. That's 888-729-3776. Say say ESPN. By the way, I should have told you before we started talking that it was time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. But instead, I'll end it this way by saying Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. Talking NFL playoffs right here on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save an average of $620. Thanks again, Damian Woody, NFL analyst for ESPN, for coming on the show with us just a few minutes ago to talk about these playoffs. Number to call up, as always, is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. To answer the previous caller's questions from a few minutes ago, as it pertained to Le'Veon Bell and running backs, 2017 running back guaranteed salary rankings because he's a rookie. Leonard Fournette is number one because he's guaranteed 27 million, 27.1 million. Ezekiel Elliott at $24.5 million, 98% of his salary is guaranteed. Devontae Freeman of Atlanta is at 17.2, uh, only 41% of his dollars or 53.45% of his salary is guaranteed, by the way. LaShawn McCoy is at 18.2 million. About 45% of his salary was guaranteed, and Christian McCaffrey was at 17.2 million. Those are just the guaranteed salary rankings. But in terms of running back average salary rankings, Le'Veon Bell is at number one at 12.1. Devontae Freeman's getting 8.2 this year. He's for the Atlanta Falcons. He's at number two. LaShawn's at number three. LaShawn McCoy at 8 million. He's tied with Jonathan Stewart as well. And fifth on the list is Doug Martin of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 7.15 million. So those are your top five paid running backs in the NFL as we speak. Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Freeman, LaShawn McCoy, Jonathan Stewart, and of course, Doug Martin. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Mike in Florida, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Yeah, how you doing, Stephen A.? How are you? Love, love your show, man. Hey, man, I'm a, I'm a diehard Steelers fan. I was born in Pittsburgh. And, you know, look, Le'Veon Bell, we all know what he is. But it just seems like the focus shouldn't be on nothing but the Jaguars, not the Patriots, not the contracts. I agree. Jaguars. You know? I agree. So, I agree. So, I, you know, every year we get to this point, and what happens? We fight, we fall out. We fall out with New England. Something always seems to come up. The focus should be let's play ball and let the rest take care of itself. And listen, and you might want to you might want to focus right. on New England too, because I got new. Hey, listen, you don't need to focus on New England. You got to focus on the Jaguars. But in the event that the Steelers get past the Jaguars, I'm here to tell you, New England will be waiting. They're fishing in the red zone. You've got it. The situation with them in Tennessee. Tennessee has been tremendous defensively against the deep pass. Uh, but New England is so efficient in the red zone that you got to look. You, listen, this is why they're going to be the favorites to get back to the Super Bowl because they produce when it counts. Thirty four point twenty six percent of their one hundred and thirty three red zone attempts have ended successfully with a touchdown. That's the league's third third highest success rate. So that's something to keep in mind. Jacksonville obviously doesn't pose that kind of problem for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. And and the Patriots, they've been our what that's that's been our Achilles heel for the last three years. They mm-hmm. put us out. You know, we go up we go we play good ball all year and then we get to the Patriots and they make us look look pedestrian. It's 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 ridiculous. And I, and I love my Steelers. Probably more than anybody, but we got to focus on one thing: Jacksonville, then New England, and then the Super Bowl. You know, and and that's what it should be about. I love Le'Veon. Play ball. We know what you can do. You're gonna get your money. Antonio Brown got his money. He, you know, he. I was proud of him. He didn't hold out. He come to training camp, and what happened? Before the season started, they made him the highest favorite season. So that's kind of how the Steelers work. You know, they, they don't mm-hmm. like all the holding out type of stuff. You know, they you know, they did offer him a good contract, which he might be worth more than fifteen, and I'm sure he is, but you know, that's a lot of money, fifteen million dollars, but that's not I got you know, I gotta I gotta interrupt you because we're running out of time. I got your point. You're getting a bit redundant, but that's okay. 
That's okay. I understand. The bottom line is this. Le'Veon Bell should be focused on the Jacksonville Jaguars and nothing else at this particular moment in time. Matter of fact, if he ends up wetting the bed and the Steelers end up losing, they're going to accuse him in part for being at fault because he wasn't focused enough to focus on the game. He was too busy focused on his contract. That could come back to haunt him. He's really got to perform this weekend. Hour number two up next on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt, so pardon my inferiority complex about Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app, plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh Uh-oh, choking hazard. (gasps) Popcorn girdle! Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show here with you for the next hour over the airways of ESPN Radio. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive's Home Insurance. Get your quote at Progressive.com today. We'll continue talking about these NFL players, talking about Le'Veon Bell. I wanted to transition to a little NFL talk. I thought it was apropos um, to get into a little uh, NBA, I apologize, NBA talk. Uh, I thought it was necessary. After seeing what I saw last night, after watching what I watched last night, after watching LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers stink up the joint last night, along with hearing what Greg Popovich had to say about LeVar Ball last night, I felt compelled to include NBA banter on my talk on my radio show leading into week two of NFL playoff weekend. First things first, the Cleveland Cavaliers looked horrible last night. They got their butts whipped. It was a butt whipping. And it's the second game in a row they've got waxed. Minnesota destroyed them, and then after that, Toronto destroyed them. They've been down by 30 and 35 points in these games, for crying out loud. And then, then you listen, I'm not going to belabor the issue with J.R. Smith. All I'm going to tell you is this. He's a starting shooting guard that went scoreless in consecutive games against Jimmy Butler and DeMar DeRozan. Scoreless, 0 for 7 against Minnesota, 0 for 5 against Toronto. Played 27 and 25 minutes, respectively. I'm not saying you got to be a gangbuster, but my Lord, scoreless at the shooting guard spot? Really? Really? Wanted to start. In fairness to J.R. Smith, he deserved to start. After getting to the finals last year, improving as the best the perimeter defender on the Cleveland Cavaliers, One could argue that he should have come off the bench once a three-time champion arrives, but why upset the apple cart? Especially when you got a class individual like Dwayne Wade that doesn't mind coming off the bench and doing what it takes to facilitate winning. Maybe you should have left J.R. Smith in the starting lineup to begin with because it would have been something more difficult for him to handle being on the bench than it would have been for an experienced champion like Dwayne Wade. Nevertheless, That's not Cleveland's problem. Kyrie being gone is not just Cleveland's problem. Isaiah Thomas being back and clearly rusty and obviously a defensive liability due to his miniature stature is not the problem. Biggest problem the Cleveland Cavaliers have is that they can't stop anybody. Their defense is horrid. 22nd overall, 25 and two point shots, 22nd against the three point shooters. Dead last in defensive efficiency since Christmas. They look bad. There's no way around it. Somehow, some way, Tyron Lue's going to have to get it together and get them on the right page because this does not look good at all. You can't listen. Any hope that you thought you had of Cleveland beating Golden State is rapidly evaporating before I've ever eyes. Because say what you want about Golden State. But not only can they amp it up offensively at a moment's notice and literally blow you out of the state. Defensively, they hunker down. They buckle up. 
and they strap everybody down with them. This is an elite defensive team. By the way, Kevin Durant plays defense, in case y'all didn't notice. And I think the time has arrived for us to at least contemplate the notion Cleveland might not come out of the East. When you got all of these bodies that you've got to play, and you've got all of these individuals that need to make sacrifices, Tyron Lue pulls this off. He's cementing and solidified himself as a good young coach in this game. I think he can coach. I got a lot of faith in Tyron Lue. But this is a new kind of challenge. You got so many guys that you gotta, you, you, you've gotta massage. It's gonna be tough. It's a tough spot for him to be in. I'm here to tell you. It's not easy. And that much needs to be said. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. They've lost six of their last eight, seven of their last ten. They've given up a hundred points or more in 30 of the 41 games they've played. They ain't playing no damn defense, and that's about an effort and want to. They are getting waxed. They're getting punked. And so far, they ain't doing much about it. Somebody needed to say it. I'm saying it. And by the way, my rant about the Washington Wizards yesterday, it's not because I don't believe in the Washington Wizards. It's because I do. And I'm tired of them disappointing me. I think Bradley Beal and John Wall are all-star caliber players. Together, I think they could be an elite backcourt. But something's not right with those two. I'm talking about as a tandem. Something's not right. They're not in sync. You know, maybe the way Isaiah and Joe Dumas and all of that stuff was, maybe that's a bit too lofty of a comparison to make. But I'm just saying to y'all, personality-wise, something ain't right there. And that's why I brought it up. I believe in them. And I want to be in Chocolate City for the playoffs. And I got some serious questions about what I'm seeing. It's just that simple. 888-729-3776, 888-SAY-ESPN. That's the number to call up. The other story that I wanted to point to before we got back to the NFL. Greg Popovich spoke to the media last night. Um, And as the article reads, several prominent NBA coaches voiced support for Lakers head coach Luke Walton this week, but none spoke as forcefully against his chief antagonist, Laval Ball, as Greg Popovich did on Thursday. Five-time championship coach for the San Antonio Spurs had this to say, quote, the first, I think the first thing to look at is the substance and gravitas of the source that speaks. Popovich said before the Spurs lost to the Lakers last night. And just stopping at that point would tell you you don't need to listen or go any further. It's just another fan in the peanut gallery with an opinion which is meaningless. That's what Popovich said. Popovich's dismissal of Ball, the article reads, came in response to a question about recent comments from the father of Lakers point guard Lonzo Ball that Walton had lost support of the Los Angeles Lakers. Even if that were true, the second-year Lakers coach certainly has the support of Popovich, the dean of NBA coaches. In his 22nd season at the helm for the Spurs, Popovich pointed to Walton's pedigree as the son of Hall of Famer Bill Walton. Quote, Luke has been schooled in this game since he was a little kid. He doesn't even know what he knows, probably just by osmosis, whether it was living at home or in school as a player, he's had tremendous experience as a player. He wasn't the best athlete in the world, but those are the guys that sometimes understand the game better. It comes a little tougher. They understand what wins and loses, what they have to do to get an advantage and really understand the game, which he does. He added that Walton inherently understands the game of basketball, right? Popovich goes on to say Walton is way more red than ready to handle this situation. It's a situation that's going to take some time. It's a process and it certainly doesn't need any further, any outside chatter from people who don't have a clue and haven't gotten over themselves. I don't disagree with a word Greg Popovich said. He's absolutely right. I think Luke Walton deserves the benefit of the doubt. I'm a fan of Luke Walton's. And I love his father who I used to work with right here at ESPN. Bill Walton's a good man, as kind and as gentle as they come. And by the way, he's one of the greatest big men ever played the game of basketball, won a championship in Portland, won another championship with the Boston Celtics. And if it hadn't been for his perpetual foot injuries, would have easily gone down. He's one of the top three centers in the history of basketball. And the man knows the game. And it's quite candid in terms of how he speaks. 
So if he's candid with us, you know he's candid with his son. And Luke Walton is somebody that I've got a lot of faith in. And I like what I see from the young, talented Lakers squad. They just need three-point shooting, which Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka have to get. And by the way, speaking of Magic Johnson, when I was joking about Kevin Durant yesterday, but talking about how Kevin Durant as a talent was better than Magic Johnson, he wasn't the leader and a champion that Magic Johnson was. But if he ultimately became a champion like that, from a skill perspective, Magic wasn't on his level. My man Snoop Dogg actually got at me on Twitter. And then he and I spoke and laughed about it last night. It's my brother. I love him. But he had to get at me because I dared say something about Irvin Magic Johnson, who I love too. But getting back to Popovich and LeVar Ball, Popovich is right in what he says. He's absolutely correct. And it's wrong for LeVar Ball to take the actions that he took, which I've openly concurred. But I will say this. I wish I had heard as much noise when David Fisdale got fired from Memphis. Would have been nice. I wish there would have been more introspection in defense of Earl uh coach in Phoenix that lost his job that would have been nice don't get me started on how I feel about Mark Jackson and how quiet the coaches throughout the league were when he put the wheels in motion and and Golden State decided to go in a different direction but in fairness to all of those guys that's not the same as a father speaking out against an organization he's not a part of but I just thought it would be nice to point those things out 888-SAY-ESPN, that's 888-729-3776. Our resident handicap out of Las Vegas, the one and only R.J. Bell. He's up next live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Always my honor and privilege to have my next guest on the line, our resident uh, handicapper based out of Vegas, founder for pregame.com, official odds maker uh, for the Associated Press. His Twitter handle is at RJ in Vegas. I'm talking about the one and only RJ Bell, who's usually with us on a weekly basis. So it's no surprise that he's here right now going into week two of the NFL playoff week. And what's up, buddy? How you doing? Hey, Stephen. Big weekend coming up. Yes, it is. By the way, before we get into um, any of these games and having you handicap them for us, Highlight this for me. You sent me a quarterback experience disparity. Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, Big Ben, Drew Brees, compared to Nick Foles, Marcus Mariota, Blake Bortles, Case Keenum. Ever recall going into a playoff weekend with this big of a disparity practically in every game? Not not even close. And really, it's every game, right? Think about it is the the closest one is Matt Ryan with nine games and 19 touchdowns, and Nick Foles has one game and two touchdowns. That's an eight-game disparity, and Tom Brady has 34 games versus one. Big Ben has 20 games versus one for Bortles, and Breeze has 12 games versus zero. So if you add it up, it's 75 games for the experienced quarterbacks in the playoffs Three games for the inexperienced quarterback. And 133 touchdowns for the experienced quarterbacks against five for the inexperienced ones. Man, oh, man. And only Case Keenum is favored. So the three experienced quarterbacks are favored. But Minnesota with the inexperienced quarterback favored over Drew Brees. Are you guys in Vegas doing odds on who's going to be the next head coach at various franchises? You know, Vegas doesn't typically do that, but the online books do. Because Vegas, there's more regulation. But online, it's like the Wild West. So they'll have odds on anything. Mm. R.J. Bell right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's get into this game. Atlanta Falcons favored by three at the Philadelphia Eagles. Explain that one. Now, this is my best bet. I like the Eagles here. Now, imagine if Philadelphia had Wentz, they'd be between a six and seven point favorite over the Falcons. Now, Atlanta is a three point favorite. So you do the math. It's a 10 point adjustment from Wentz to Nick Foles. Now, let me ask you, Stephen, entering this season, would you have said Nick Foles is one of the five best backup quarterbacks? No. No. I would not have said that. 
Wow. I was, a guy I that had a 20. I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. I know he had 27 touchdowns and two interceptions one year for the Philadelphia Eagles under Chip Kelly, but ever since then, he fell off the map. I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have thought about him, actually. Maybe right. I would have been wrong, but I wouldn't have thought about it. I think most, well, there's not many backups you think about, right? So, okay. I think most people would have said Foles was an elite backup. And if you think about it, Wentz obviously was an elite starter, but the idea that drop being so significant, it really speaks to the public falling in love with Atlanta because they look so good against the Rams team and them not wanting any piece of foes. And as we talk about, those unpopular teams are usually the teams that offer value. RJ Bell right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. So talk to me again about Atlanta and Philadelphia. Anything else you want to add in terms of Philadelphia and what your expectations are for this game? I think what people are underestimating is the fatigue factor with the Falcons because this is a team that had to go out west, right, win that game in L.A., fly back to Georgia, then fly up to Philly. Now, that seems like, okay, they're on a private jet, you know, charter jet, everything's okay, no doubt. But this is going to be the fourth road game for Atlanta in the last five weeks. And these weren't just easy games. Every one of them, obviously last week was a playoff game, but they were – pretty much had to win most of these games to get into the playoffs. So I think this Falcons team, especially after the road trip, is going to be fatigued playing their fourth road game in five. And I think that's another reason Philadelphia plus three is the right side. I'm thinking the way Atlanta has looked in terms of defensively over the last several weeks, combined with the fact that they're going up against Nick Foles, I think it's a big plus that Atlanta defense. And offensively, I'm sick and tired of Matt Ryan deferring to Steve Sarkeesian. I know he's the offensive coordinator, but but he's a first-year guy at that position. And Matt Ryan in his 10th season, I see no reason why he can't audible. I see no reason why he can't take control of this offense, particularly considering the fact that last year's offense worked better than this year's offense, and you have the same exact personnel to work with. No, I agree. Uh, Sarkeesian's been a big question mark as the OC for the Falcons. Remember last week against as many call him the boy genius, McVeigh, it all went Atlanta's way. So the really, you know, turnovers, et cetera, there really wasn't a lot of pressure on Sarkeesian to call a great game. Now he's going up against maybe the best defense in the NFL, the Eagles. They're certainly in the top two or three. And Schwartz as their defensive coordinator. Now people remember him as a head coach that was unsuccessful, but he is an elite defensive coordinator. And if I can have Schwartz, Versus Sarkeesian, I want Swartz. New England Patriots favored by 13 and a half hosting Tennessee. Believe it or not, I don't think that's too high. No, I, I'll be honest with you. At 14, I'd probably lean Titans. At 13 and a half, I'd probably lean New England. That's how important the number 14 is because so many games fall with a two touchdown victory. By the way, through the regular season, you know this, I hardly ever will lay double digits in the NFL, but in the playoffs, it's a little bit different because in the playoffs, the favorite team is always going to be focused. During the regular season, there's a chance that 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 big favorite is looking ahead to the next week, not in the playoffs, and that leads to the stat. Seven straight double-digit favorites have covered in the NFL playoffs. This would be an eighth with New England. Let me ask you a question. Sure. People I respect think Tom Brady at the end of these seasons and as older quarterbacks, as they reach game 17, 18, there's been a significant drop off. Do you think Brady's age combined with how deep into the season we are has Brady being less of a quarterback than he was four months ago? I do not. I think that ultimately have not having uh, Edelman catches up with you. Gronk missing the game catches up with you. Um, I think weather conditions ultimately affects you as well because it was freezing out there for one or two of those games. Uh, I don't believe that. I want to see what he does in these playoffs before I jump to such a notion. But I will tell you this. If some Somehow, some way, Max Kellerman ends up being right, and Brady suddenly falls off of a cliff and looks like a shell of himself. Boy, the New England Patriots are going to look bad for trading Garoppolo. That well, I will admit. That brings up another point. If we were starting next season, right? So next September is where would you put Brady one to thirty-two in the NFL as quarterbacks, and where would you put Garoppolo? Two or three. 
two or three. Uh, so Brady, two or three, and where's Garoppolo? Garoppolo will be low. I don't know how much lower, but I wouldn't put Brady ahead of Aaron Rodgers, and I wouldn't put Garoppolo ahead of um of uh I wouldn't put Garoppolo ahead of Breeze. I wouldn't put him ahead of Aaron Rodgers. I wouldn't have put him ahead of Tom Brady. I wouldn't put him ahead of Carson Wentz. I agree, but let's just say Garoppolo's eighth, even okay. and, Bra- and Brady's third. You got to wonder the win. And I get there's emotional and and loyalty and all those questions we can debate with the Patriots, but it strikes me that this next year they're going to be fairly close. And I guess we both would agree if we had to guess the next season, right, the 2019 season, wouldn't you guess that Garoppolo's ahead of Brady? Uh, in the next two years? Yeah, uh, let's say the start of not next year, but we the year see. after. We shall see. Garoppolo's being coached by Shanahan, who's a pretty good, but he's the same Shanahan that was the offensive coordinator when they had a 28-3 to lead against New England and blew it. No, he's I that know. same guy. So all I'm saying is, is that I, I, I would, I would, one would surmise that Garoppolo would probably be better because he's younger and he's just getting started. The flip side to it is that we don't know yet because of who he's being coached by. Well, which I think brings up the general point with the people mad about the Garoppolo trade is you could make the clear case Brady's going to be better next year. It'd be hard to make the case he's going to be better the year after, in my opinion. That's true. So I agree. It, it, it really says, hey, you got one year that the older guy's a little better, and yeah. then the rest of the time it's Garopp- advantage Garoppolo. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. R.J. Bell right here with Stephen A. and ESPN Radio. Real quick, because you got to get on out of here, R.J. Pittsburgh Steel is favored by 7.5, hosting Jacksonville. Here's the trend of the week. If a team plays and one team beats the other by 20-plus points, like Jacksonville did, then they meet in the playoffs. The team that dominated the earlier matchup is 14-2 and two straight up. So mm-hmm. Jacksonville dominated the earlier matchup. They are in that 14 and two straight up spot, but they're getting seven, seven and a half points. Mm-hmm. So I don't like Bortles. I especially don't like Bortles thrown from behind. But if you think Jacksonville can get a lead and grind it out, I think Jacksonville is has the value here, and I would even look at them on the money line. If you bet Jacksonville to win the game, 100 wins you 300, 3-1 three payoff on that underdog. Minnesota favored by four, hosting New Orleans Saints. To me, the game of the week, and here's the question that decides which side you're going to pick in this game. Is Case Keenum's season this year his true level of play? No! Okay. Absolutely not. Then when's it going to be exposed? This weekend, I'm All right. going with the Saints. And, and if you think that's the case, I think that's absolutely the way to go. Some people are thinking he's reached a new level, and this is the truth for him now. He has played exceptionally well. Second best QBR in the NFL, ESPN's QBR rating, second best in the NFL. Last stat here, and this is amazing. So Sean Payton won a playoff game last weekend, right? Mm-hmm. Coach Zimmer has not been on a staff that won a playoff game for 21 years. Really? 1996. He's mm. he's been on 20 straight staffs that's completed a season. He's coached every year in the NFL. He made the playoffs 10 times, Coach Zimmer, 0 and 10 straight up in those games. Mm. So he's never even won a playoff game. No, no, he won one with the Cowboys in 96. Right. But he hasn't won one since. Nope. 20 straight years in the business. That's that's tough. I think he's one of the top 5 coaches in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, but that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> True. That's bad. Appreciate it, RJ. Thanks so much, buddy. Thanks, Steve. Take it easy. RJ Bell, uh, founder for pregame.com, official odds maker for the Associated Press. And obviously, he's got that Twitter handle at RJ in Vegas, our resident handicapper right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, breaking down those NFL games, 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. Back to your calls in a few. It's Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. <laughs> Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Back to the phones we go. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, 888-729-3776. says 888-SAY-ESPN. Starting off the year with a little romance is easy at 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses for only $29.99, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Back to the phones we go. Carlton in Tampa. You're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up, buddy? How are you? Oh, the nonsense I have to listen to on your TV program and your radio show today. Between the giant patriot sock puppet Damian Woody or the left-wing lunatic Max Kellerman, where do I start? Uh, today, Max says... I will, I, will that- say this, I will say this to you, man. 
You need to be nice, man. I can't be having you crash my shows. I'm on the show, Carlton. Oh, I my goodness. Could you be a be little nice? nice? Could you be a people. little nice to your buddy? Could you be a little nice I'm to your nice buddy? I'm nice to you, Stephen A. I'm just not <laughs> nice to your guest. Today, Max said that just like Peyton Manning when he threw nine touchdowns and 17 interceptions, and by the way, had a passer rating of 68, mm-hmm. Tom Brady fell off a cliff this year. Tom Brady this year threw 32 touchdowns, eight interceptions, had a passer rating of 103, 35 points higher than, than Peyton Manning in his last year. And somehow Max equates the two. Max also said that Jimmy Garoppolo carved up the Jaguars. He doesn't realize that Blake Bortles in that game threw for 140 more yards than Jimmy Garoppolo did, but he also threw three picks. It was his worst game of the season taking care of the ball, and that's the only reason why the 49ers beat the Jaguars. But Max has already got Jimmy G in the Hall of Fame. Okay, but on to the only way this weekend that the Tennessee Titans could beat the New England Patriots. There is a way, even though this is the biggest tomato can be. I want to hear this. I want to hear this from you. What's the only way they could do it? All right. Nine times this year, Stephen A., the Patriots have been held to 10 or fewer possessions in the entire game. And that includes oftentimes a stub possession at the end of the first half or the end of the game where there's only a few seconds and it's not a real possession. But nine times they've been held to 10 or fewer possessions. And you know why? Because they have the second worst rushing defense in the league by Bill Belichick's favorite metric, which is yards per rush allowed, okay? So okay. other teams can control the game and eat up the clock by running the ball. So Derek Henry... And you think has- Derek Henry... Derek Henry ain't running for 150, 180 yards this time around. I can't see that, Carlton. I can't see it. They're going to have to do it. And they're, and they're going up again, like I said. Second worst rush defense in the league. Now here's what they also have to do, Okay. The Tennessee Titans need to take the ball away from the Patriots twice, which cuts those ten possessions down to eight. If you take the ball away twice when the Patriots have the ball, they're down to eight scoring possessions. And the the way they're going to have to do it is they're going to pick Brady off once. He threw five picks in the month of December, and they've got to make – him cough up the fumble. He's put the ball on the ground six times this year. Hasn't lost them all, but he's put the ball on the ground six times. So if you can do that, if you can limit them to eight real possessions and you have ten, you might be able to beat them. But it's still going to take the guys that are not going to get as much attention having a big game. And my number one candidate is Corey Davis, the rookie wide receiver out of Western Michigan. He has shined in a couple of games for Tennessee this year. He needs to go off because Butler will shut down either Matthews or he'll shut down Eric Decker. So either Delaney Walker or Corey Davis is also going to have a big game along with Henry. But you got to take the ball away from them. And Tennessee's pretty good at taking the ball away this they're year. They give good. it up they're, too, they're, too they're much. Pretty up, but they give it up too much, and you can't give up the ball against New England. I don't trust Bortles not to be able to do that, and I damn sure ain't trusting Derek. Henry to run roughshod over the New England Patriots the way he did against Kansas City. I just don't see it. I think your argument is far more profound in a rematch against the Steelers or even against the Jacksonville Jaguars for an AFC championship game. I think it's far more plausible in that matchup, Carlton, than it would be against the Tennessee Titans. I'm looking for the Steelers, my friend, but man, oh man, uh, they got me scared to death. They, this nonsense out there, looking past these Jacksonville Jaguars. Big mistake. I got a feeling they may go home, and they are by far the best chance of knocking the Patriots well, that's out, Mitchell, out, out that's, of the Super Bowl. That's yeah. Mitchell and, La- and Le'Veon Bell with what they're saying. Big Ben Roethlisberger is not looking to pa- pass Jacksonville. Matter of fact, he damn near sound panic about going up against them. Go back and look at the video when they played the Patriots, too. In that last, those last drives where Grock went wild, Mitchell was nowhere to be found. He was 15 yards away from everybody. And he's yammering? Man, oh man, that man has got to shut up and actually play some, play some decent safety for a change. Amen. Amen. He can play, but he needs to play better. You're right about that. Appreciate it, Carlton. Look forward to talking to you Monday after these games are being played. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We'll close out the show with your calls in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Let's go back to the phones before we get on out of here. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's go. To Jose in Brooklyn, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me real quick. Go ahead. 
Stephen A., uh, I just want to ask you, what are the chances that LeBron could be offered a contract next year to possibly play at, uh, with the Boston Celtics? I know that he has issues with Kyrie. Stop it. And I know it might sound Zero. a little crazy. But- Stop it. Zero. Have a nice weekend. He ain't going to Boston. Cancel that. Frank in Texas, you're live. Get over. Up. Piss me off. Frank. Yes, sir. Long you're live on the air. your show. Appreciate it. Go ahead, Ray. Lady on Bell. What about, you know, forget, I agree. Shouldn't have said a darn thing. But what I'm thinking is 73 million, five years, 48 guarantees. Incentive on the other two. Might work. That's not a bad deal for him. That's not a bad deal. That's fair. More than fair. Might have a point. Think about it. Kevin in Houston, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, what's up, Stephen A.? I'm good. Go ahead, man. Hey, I just want to agree with Colton, man. Mike Mitchell needs to shut up and play his game. Because you know why? Every time Mike Mitchell, even if the Pittsburgh Steelers start talking, it's all about the media. They never get into the game. How are you looking past the Jacksonville Jaguars? Just how? When they put up 30 points against you? And then you have Luke Fournette that runs. Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, you're right in terms of Mike Mitchell needs to shut his mouth and just be ready to play because, listen, he, he you know, talk about he, he guarantees a victory against the Patriots. He gave up nine receptions, 168 yards to Rob Gronkowski. Okay? I mean, you're a free safety. I mean, you're there in the vicinity, or, we, or at least we thought you were supposed to be. Uh, but against Jacksonville, let's be clear, Pittsburgh's defense did not lose that game. Big Ben Roethlisberger threw five interceptions. That's what lost that game. Let's keep that in mind. I, I totally get you on that. But still, 180, 180 yards rushing? Come on, yeah, Stephen A. That's true. That is true. Can't and, get around and, that one. And, you know, and, and it hurts me to, like, to say this. Our zone defense just doesn't work. It doesn't work because we always leave the middle of the field wide open. And like I had, like what happened, Leonard Fournette is going to rush through the uh, middle of the field, probably pick up 15 to 20 yards. It doesn't work. And then when you play, well, you got to also cover, remember something else, too. Even though that wasn't the case, well, you got another problem you haven't even brought up, Kevin. That game was with Ryan Shazier, who's their speedster. Exactly. Now he's gone. Exactly. I'm very worried. Uh, I appreciate the call, though. I got to run. I appreciate the call. I get it. I understand. Steelers, they better they better not take Jacksonville lightly. I'm telling you that right now. Jason in Ohio, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, go ahead, Jason. Hey, Stephen A. I'm a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, and they are a sorry group right now. I don't even have confidence that they will make it out of, hear me out, the second round of the playoffs. And this is why the oldest team in the league – Look at them defensively. They are atrocious. Isaiah Thomas, tiny. Look at Kevin Love. All right, well, who's the second round? Second round would be against Toronto this year. Toronto, and let's say they, yeah, no, they're not getting out of the second round. Isaiah Thomas can't play defense. Kevin Love, no lateral quickness. J.R. Smith, a capable defender, when he's disgruntled because of his offensive role, he doesn't play, he doesn't play defense. Offensively, they are a team that has relied on playmaking of Kyrie and LeBron in previous years and three-point shooting. Good point. Good this year, point, they Jason. Don't have. Jason, good point. I knew that J.R. Smith was playing badly, but that's a really, really good point. His frustration with his offensive role, uh, more so than him not initially starting, is a bigger problem for him on the defensive side of the ball this year. That's a good point. Let me ask you this. I know you I know you got to go. But is, do the Cavaliers, or for that matter, does any team in the league believe, truly believe, they have a chance against the Golden State Warriors? I believe the Cavaliers, especially having gone up against the Warriors, having lost Kyrie Irving, truly do not believe that they can win. So the effort level well, to answer there. Your question, to answer your question, San Antonio believes in themselves and so does Houston. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But i got to run. Enjoy playoff weekend. KP in Iowa, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I want to know why my Titans is getting no love, but yet the Jacksonville Jaguars is getting all this love. Because we y'all don't have them. the same defense. Y'all, don't, I understand it, but y'all don't have the defense that the Titans have. And Marcus Mariota forgot how to throw in a pocket. That's why you're not getting the love. Them. That's why you're not getting the love. But, you don't know but that? everybody said they in the same defense in Week 17 as they was in Week 2, and we beat them again in Week 17. No one said we were going to beat the Chiefs, and look what we did to the Chiefs. Yeah, but look at what you did with everybody else. And the fact of the matter is, that they, again, Marcus Mariota ain't throwing effective from the pocket. And to beat New England, you're going to have to get production from him. You know that, KP. 
He's hey, going to win Tom Brady. In Kansas City. I watched my boy Marcus show out, and I watched my defense shun out that high-powered I'm gonna offense. Try. I'm going to stop you again. I'm going to stop. Be quiet and listen. They're playing Tom Brady and New England Patriots. They're not playing Jacksonville. You'd have a point if they were playing Jacksonville. They're not playing Jacksonville. They're playing Tom Brady, KP. That's the whole month of December. He's been trash. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're not listening. You're not listening. You can't call up on my show and talk to yourself. You gotta have a conversation. You're not playing Jacksonville. You're playing Tom Brady. I bet you I won't be able to find you Monday, KP. I bet you that. But you'll be able to find me, y'all. I'll be back Monday after playoff weekend. Until then, peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.